Hello, Rick Earth here, and welcome back to video number 31 of Rick's Pipe Dream Magnetic Motor Generator Project Series. And here's the result, 27 screws later. Yes, the segments are all mounted on the flywheel. Give that a little bit of a spin for you. Yes, I think that's going to be sufficient for the preliminary test. As you can see, it's a little more than a third. It's actually almost a half the way around the uh, rim. And uh, I measured one of these with the pull scale, and it was 9 ounces. So there's 27 ounces on there right now. And by the time I get to halfway around, that would be about 32 probably. That's two pounds. So uh, we figure that when this is fully mounted all the way around the wheel, uh, we're going to have four pounds of weight added. Now, as, if I remember correctly, I think that the, uh, the birch flywheel totaled out to about uh, four pounds of weight. So four and four, that, that gives us eight pounds. I'm doubling the weight of the flywheel, in other words. And uh, this should prove quite advantageous in the running experiments. Uh, this type of a flywheel with the mass concentrated uh, near the outer perimeter is the most advantageous uh, type of flywheel design. Okay, the plates are all mounted on the flywheel. And the mounting bar is back in place. The I have the stator magnet aligned with the uh, seam in between two of the plates. However, as you can see, uh, the stator magnet is not centered up. It used to be centered up uh, when it was uh, on the flip side on the uh, bike wheel. And the reason for that is because we had an 8 degree angle that the uh, outward end of the slider bar was tilted upwards. And that uh, moved the center position outwards on the wheel. Uh, with, the, with the outward end of the slider bar uh, pretty much leveled out now with the wheel. This brings the stator magnet in further inwards on the wheel. So, what I need to do is simply drill a new hole right about here. Uh, I need to move the, uh, the pivot rod. It has to be moved outwards uh, 13, 16, 7 inch. And then I'll be centered directly over the uh, center line of the, of the wheel. So I'll do that now, and, uh, and then we'll get back to you again. Okay, as you can see, the stator pivot rod has been uh, reoriented, repositioned, to put the stator magnet over the center of the flywheel. Now let's give that a little spin. Of course, the uh, stator magnet is attracted to the metal in the arc plates. No doubt about that. However, the attraction is always equal. Now, I have uh, fooled around with the prototype a little bit, and I've set up a rotor magnet arrangement on the steel plates of the flywheel and uh, I'm just about to give that a test spin I have no idea how this is going to work out but uh, it, it seemed to me that it made sense anyways and I'll explain that to you first of all let me kind of back up a little ways here uh, okay, right here, you see that I've marked uh, with a piece of uh, masking tape, and I wrote MID on there, M-I-D. 
And that would be the midpoint of these uh, metal plates, or the midpoint of the, the mag rotor magnet layout, you might say. And um, I thought this was important because uh, on, on the reverse side, on, on the bike wheel, um, if I could sustain movement uh, through magnetic interactions and go all the way to the end of a, a uh, layout, uh, it would then stop at the end and, and move back, cog backwards, uh, and it would rock back and forth, back and forth, and uh, slowly diminishing until it finally comes to rest at the center point of the layout. Okay, that would be the midpoint. So I wanted to see what happens uh, if I can get all the way to the end of this layout. Is, uh, is it going to rock back to the midpoint and stop there? Uh, I would suspect so. However, I have done some uh, things here that will hopefully prevent that from occurring uh, by moving the magnets in, into different placements on these steel plates. Uh, I'm, I'm going to try and trick the uh, stator magnet. When the rotor magnets are all lined up, like on the bike wheel, um, so they're in direct alignment with the stator when the stator is locked into place. You get a, um, a situation where the stator magnet sees the entire group of uh, rotor magnets as a single magnet. So at the lead-in end you would have a strong attraction to the stator magnet and since it's away from the stator mostly uh, it, it's going to accelerate until it uh, reaches the midpoint and then it'll slow down and by the time it gets to the tail end of the uh, rotor magnet group uh, we'll, we'll get some reverse attraction and if we go if we have enough momentum to go beyond the last magnet of the rotor magnet group it uh, as you've seen in past experiments it, it will rapidly uh, reverse the rotation and the uh, rotor magnet group will cycle back through and that's when you get that rocking motion back and forth until it finally stops right about the midpoint of the rotor magnet group. Okay, but um, that's the problem when the rotor magnets are all lined up straight with the uh, stator magnet. The, the stator magnet, like I say, it sees the entire group as a single magnet and uh, that's why it finally does come to rest in the center of the rotor magnet group. Uh, that's the effective point where uh, things are kind of canceled out or nullified. So, I'm hoping I can uh, get past that midpoint when this finally comes to rest. And uh, I've set up my rotor magnets to attempt to uh, foil the uh, the stator magnet. I can see that we're just about out of time right now, so I'm going to say goodbye on this video. Thanks for watching 